Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. But before we jump on in, I just want to really quickly ask, how's everybody's day? How's everybody's night going? Um, also, I just want to really quickly say thank you to everybody who continuously watches the channel, you know, continuously supports the channel. You guys seriously are amazing. You guys are seriously like the feel that continues to, you know, not only power this entire channel, but also like just seeing the growth of this channel in such a short amount of time has been something special. And I, I just want to give it out to all of you guys. Like you guys are continuously helping this channel thrive, continuously helping this channel move on and, uh, you know, grow. So thank you to everybody out there who continuously, you know, not only, you know, supports the channel, but also even supports me on like Twitter and stuff. Like you guys are seriously amazing. And I, I, I do mean it. Like I truly do mean it when I say like I appreciate all of you and I thank all of you as well. Um, but with that being said, you know, as we do really kind of look at this market, I just want to really quickly kind of get you guys to a level head uh, sort of, you know, aspect. And it's the idea that like, I know that right now we are seeing a ton of green within this market. It's very exciting. It's very, you know, amazing. But the issue here is that we do have an FOMC meeting and we also have the GDP report coming out at the end of this month. And as we are really kind of seeing a ton of green, like, you know, if we go to the seven day span, a lot of these altcoins are up massively. And I just really want to say like, you know, as we are seeing a lot of these assets kind of moving like this, just be aware that we will most likely see a 180 happen within this market. My target on Bitcoin is like around like the 24.2K mark. I think that, you know, as we do kind of range on today, we might see like a major impulsive move on Bitcoin and in the market. But after that, I do suspect a 180 turn. So just to kind of keep you guys level headed, just be cautious. Do not FOMO into positions. Let your buys come to you. Do not chase buys. And also around XRP. So you guys probably are all aware of this because I have been covering this for such a long time on this channel now. But this lawsuit has been going on for a year and seven months. And we have not seen any sort of movement going forward around regulations. In fact, we haven't even seen any clear guidelines on regulations being ushered in. What is going on? We are seeing blatant attacks on crypto. We are seeing targets being put on crypto companies, crypto exchanges. All while around the world, we are seeing movements on regulations. The UK finance minister announced that a bill for the use of stable coins will be introduced before parliament tomorrow. And this is happening today. Again, the US is dragging their feet. I don't understand what is going on right now. Like we need clear guidance. We need clear movements around regulations. We need a solid regulatory framework being ushered in. And we cannot, you know, afford to have XRP continuously being, you know, attacked from the SEC. Like, it's funny to me that we are basically seeing the SEC protect face, protect ego, and protect individuals that have been, and I'm just going to completely be honest with you guys, that have been corrupted by greed since day one. And we have seen this happen, you know, since the inception of the lawsuit. And now we are seeing this from the SEC. This is completely outrageous. Breaking the SEC in a heavily redacted letter alleging threats against an expert asked Judge Torres to revoke amnesty status granted to XRP holders and to bar Johnny Deaton from any further participation in the case. These are the same individuals that they were trying to sought to protect since day one. And the SEC is now demanding them not to be, you know, included in this case. This is an issue. Now to me, what does this look like? It looks like the SEC is extremely fearful. They are scared. Johnny Dean and the entire XRP community since day one from this lawsuit have done massive investigations and research around the SEC. Internal individuals that were higher ups, we're talking about chairman, that have clearly took pays in terms of like paychecks around Bitcoin and Ethereum to support Bitcoin and Ethereum and have a biased opinion on just those two, all while not caring about the rest of the market. XRP was trading at number two for a very long time. All of a sudden, boom, this lawsuit comes in at the perfect time, I mind you, around the entire you know crypto market. XRP gets massively slaughtered while Ethereum leads the way. 
does a massive move while XRP continuously sits down. This is an issue, okay? Because these individuals that ushered in this lawsuit went on to, you know, firms that blatantly supported, um, supported Bitcoin and Ethereum, while, of course, Ripple and XRP are in a lawsuit for over a year and seven months. This is an issue. Also, from Stuart Alderati, can I get a fact check on aisle two, please? Rep Sherman and the U.S. has not, in fact, no country has determined XRP to be a security. When elected officials don't understand that the mere filing of a case by the SEC doesn't determine anything, it's more than concerning. And we do see down here, U.S. Rep Brad Sherman urges SEC to go after crypto exchanges that had traded in XRP. This is an issue as well. This is basically every single large exchange within crypto. This is actually almost every single exchange in crypto at some point in time that have allowed for XRP to be traded. To me, this is a major warning sign. They are attacking crypto. They are trying to kill crypto. And right now, as we really kind of look into a lot of these individuals around, you know, not only, you know, crypto, but also around like the SEC, they have this biased opinion on specific agenda. And it's the idea that like XRP must be attacked. XRP must be a security. Why is that? Is it because they are fearful of what Ripple is trying to do? Like to me, I understand like, right? When you go after middlemen within the banking industry and the legacy system, there's going to be issues. But to me, like the corruption here, the blatant arrogance is so transparent. And it's a major concern right now, especially being not only a U.S. citizen, but also being invested heavily into crypto. I support crypto. I love the technology. I think that crypto has the power to fully revolutionize many industries, including the entire legacy financial system. But we will not be able to move forward, you know, as there's individuals like Brad Sherman, you know, basically having their own opinion on the technology or just too arrogant to even research the technology. And we actually do see down here, like, you know, the SEC's regulatory by enforcement approach, harming people, markets, and American innovation with unproven allegations masquerading as regulation. Is it, it, this is a concern. Like, the effect of this is a problem. And we do see down here, like, Brad Sherman doesn't understand the concept of innocent until proven guilty. What a clown. Yes, this is exactly it. Like, nobody determined XRP as a security. The funny thing is, right, is that in the U.S., we're having an ongoing battle around XRP being a security, all while major countries have already deemed XRP, well, actually, I should say almost every single area around the world besides the U.S. has determined XRP as a currency. I mean, I don't understand what the U.S. is trying to get at here. Also, we do see over here, this is very bullish for XRP because it shows how much of a threat it is to the few private market participants. And we do see our XRP right out of the gate. Now, this is Brad Sherman talking about XRP. Like, this was the opening uh, to the entire meeting earlier today. The division uh, has determined that XRP is a security and is going after XRP, but for reasons uh, that I'll bring up in questions, has not gone after the exchanges where tens of thousands of illegal securities uh, 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 transactions were occurring. Yeah. The division uh, has... So, like, we just made a video um, two days ago, right? Where we were talking about the SEC going after large exchanges. Specifically two. Johnny Deaton basically announced this and we uh, talked about it. I think that they were going to try to do this. And I'm going to say it, and I know that this might sound a little bit, um, you know, rough, but if they do go after exchanges like Binance or Coinbase, it could have a major, and, and I'm talking like a major collapsing effect around crypto. Remember, as some of these exchanges have been swallowed up by liquidity crises, as well as like major, you know, assets like Luna crashing, the, the effect that a large exchange, like, you know, for example, Binance, Coinbase, FTX, like top tier exchanges going down could have on this market would be much, much worse. And when we are talking about these people, like, it's funny that they continuously kind of tout their arrogance around like XRP and just say, XRP is a security. It is a security. It has not even been proven that it is a security. Like, we, we do see down here, like, sounded very, you know, exaggerated and fake. Like, must remember to say this, read the script. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> a script provided by JP Morgan Chase. Like, yeah, I mean, to me, 
You know, XRP is a major threat. It has always been a major threat to the banking scene. This is why XRP has been targeted since day one. But this is a very concerning issue, especially around, like, we need an unbiased approach here. We need an unbiased approach from individuals that are not protecting bankers. There's a problem here. There's a pushed agenda as well. And we do see over here, the SEC Director of Enforcement admits the SEC is cracking down on companies outside its jurisdiction. Absolutely unacceptable. And of course, this is from Tom Emmer. Um, he did say uh, down here as well. Under Chair Gensler, the SEC has become a power-hungry regulator, uh, politicizing enforcement, baiting companies to come in and talk to the commission, then hitting them with enforcement actions, discouraging good faith cooperation. We do see CZ from Binance. Wow, hard to imagine this type of conversation in most other countries. One of the reasons the U.S. is a global po um, power. And listen closely to this. This is five minutes. We're not going to you know, watch the entire thing, but just listen to like the first few uh, seconds here. As a gentleman from Minnesota, Mr. Elmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Ranking Member Huizinga for hosting uh, this hearing today. Mr. Grohl, you frequently acknowledge that public trust and confidence in our capital markets has eroded. In fact, on October 13th, 2021, you stated, quote, the decline in trust undermines the investor confidence needed for the fair, efficient, and orderly operation of our capital markets. Put simply, if the public doesn't think the system is fair, they are not going to invest their hard-earned money. Close quote. I agree. But time and time again, you place the cause of blame for this erosion of trust almost squarely on the shoulders of industry participants and companies. Mr. Gruall, the SEC is in no way blameless here. Chair Gensler's political regime at the SEC, carried out by its Division of Enforcement, has been characterized by a focus on using enforcement to expand SEC jurisdiction at the expense of public resources, public investment in our country, and public trust in our markets. It seems clear to everyone, except maybe those at the Commission, that the SEC is not regulating in good faith. Although many sectors of the industry have grappled with the SEC's politicization of regulation over the last 14 months, it can be seen most clearly when it comes to the digital asset industry. Take, for example, industry sweeps. As you know, industry sweeps are not novel to the digital asset, to the digital asset industry. They are a series of voluntary document pr production request letters as a regulator sends to everyone in a given industry who is similarly situated or is involved in the same type of activity. Mr. Gruall, does the SEC Division of Enforcement do industry sweeps? We do uh, industry sweeps from time to time when we have industry. Thank you. The here. answer is yes. I reclaim my time. Are there currently mm -hmm. any industry sweeps underway? So I, I can't talk about uh, investigations. You, you can't talk about it legally it. or you won't talk about it? It's our policy not to confirm or deny so investigations. You, so you won't talk about it. All right. Well, and that's where I just wanted to watch it to. Um, basically talking about, you know, industry sweeps. Now, listen, <laughs> I honestly th believe that the SEC is trying to do an industry sweep around crypto. I think that they are terrified of crypto. I think that when we really kind of look at bankers, I think that the bankers are paying off the SEC. Of course, like this is my opinion, if you will. Um, the bankers are paying off the SEC to blatantly attack crypto players that are taking pieces of the legacy framework and just breaking them apart and fixing them we have a monopoly of a system that is right beneath the entire banking scene that nobody really looks at and nobody pays attention to but see being a part of crypto actually opens your eyes to just how corrupt the traditional banking sector actually is there is a ton of greed flowing throughout the entire system. And it's not only banking. It's not only finance. There's greed everywhere. But the issue here that I see is the fact that the SEC is not acting in good faith. They are not acting in support of investors. They are acting in support of bankers and their own arrogance and pushed agenda. This is a concern because they will be attacking this entire asset class. And the funny thing is, is that yes, I do believe that crypto will come out victorious. And this will go down in probably one of the worst cases in history of stifling innovation within their own boundaries. Also, 
Last but not least, we actually have a 48 second clip similar to, of course, this uh, video over here. I do completely advise everybody to go check out all these videos if you haven't already. But we do see here after the chair, Brad Sherman uh, praises the SEC Gov for going after XRP. Tom Emmer on the GOP minority side tears into the agency and concludes with a warning. And listen closely to this. The SEC isn't interested in clarifying what areas of the crypto industry fall under SEC jurisdiction. We know that because FinHub, that you've referred to, the SEC division focused on crafting crypto regulation, has essentially dissolved under Gensler. Nonetheless, while abandoning good faith attempts clarify how, to clarify how the Commission's existing authority applies to digital assets, the SEC is hell-bent on expanding the size of its crypto enforcement division and using enforcement to unconstitutionally expand its jurisdiction. Under Chair Gensler, the SEC has become a power-hungry regulator, politicizing enforcement, baiting companies to, quote, come in and talk to the commission, then hitting them with enforcement actions and discouraging good faith cooperation. Understand, sir, there is a new day coming. Thank you. I yield back. A new day coming. I do believe that the SEC is about to have some issues uh, going forward. And I completely, completely look forward to this. I believe that this is going to be a very interesting next few weeks, months, and possibly even years. And uh, I conclude the video with that. I hope that you all enjoyed this. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. I just hope that you all have a beautiful day or beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. It's been Nick. Peace out, guys.